Hey, I'm Dave, back with another Summit Racing Quick Flix video, and this time around we're going to talk about automotive paints. Alright, so a couple rules of thumb before we get started. Uh, once again, as we mentioned on an earlier primer video, uh, you want to look at your local laws, uh, your environmental regulations before you choose a paint uh, that's going to have bearing on what you choose. Whether it's a low VOC type paint or a water-based paint, uh, definitely check into those before you make your choice. Uh, second thing is, just to review, uh, we talked a little bit about 1K versus 2K paints. Uh, 1K being a one-part paint where you don't require a hardener or an activator. Uh, to ready the paint uh, for application. 2K, you're going to have to use a separate hardener. Uh, sometimes you need a reducer uh, to make the paint apply properly. So 1K paints, you know, the types you find in rattle cans a lot. Um, 2Ks, obviously, uh, those are the types you're going to spray out of a spray gun. And we're going to focus mainly on those types today. All right, so before we begin with the different types of um, automotive paints, uh, just a quick anatomy lesson on what comes in a typical automotive paint, what it's made of. It generally consists of three different parts. You'll have your pigment, which is the color, the color aspect of the paint. Uh, you'll have a carrier agent, which uh, suspends the pigment in liquid until it's applied and then either dries or evaporates. And then you have a binding agent, which is the part that actually dries or hardens to the vehicle. Um, so, you know, again, the carrier agent, uh, once you apply the, the paint, that will evaporate or, or dry to the vehicle. Typically, it dries to the vehicle. Um, how paints are classified uh, generally go along the lines of what the binding agent is. Uh, you can have solvents or water. Uh, so if you have a solvent-based paint, they're using some sort of chemical as a binding agent. A water-based paint is using uh, typically water, as the name suggests, as the binding agent. So we'll look okay, so let's start by talking about some of the solvent-based paints out there. We're going to start with lacquer paints. Um, this is a, a type of paint that was really popular from the 20s or the 60s. You hear a lot of old school hot rodders talking about it. Um, it's a pretty easy paint to lay down. If you were going to be doing a first-time paint job, a you know, lacquer could conceivably be a type of paint you'd want to use. It um, has a nice glossy finish to it. Um, but there are some disadvantages to it. Uh, it's a little bit soft. It's uh, prone to chipping. Uh, it takes a lot of maintenance as far as waxing and buffing to, to keep that shine on it that we talked about. Uh, and it's not extremely durable. After a few years, it will start to lose uh, some of its color. It might fade, especially if there's a lot of a UV light if it's out in the sun a, lo a long time. So, and the other main disadvantage to it is it's 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 pretty toxic. Uh, the binding agent itself actually evaporates into the air. Uh, so. In some areas, it's actually illegal to use lacquer paints now. All right, next up, we have enamel paints. Uh, it's another type of solvent-based paint. Uh, and there's also advantages and disadvantages to that type of paint. Main disadvantage, uh, it's a little bit harder to work with. It's a little bit harder to lay down. Uh, it's not a great choice if you're a first-time painter. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, professional shops that may still use enamel paints actually will go as far as to bake the enamel paint onto the car uh, to get that nice hard finish. It is harder than the lacquer paints, however, so it is resistant to chipping. That's a good advantage to using an enamel paint. Also, typically uh, slightly less expensive than some of the urethane paints that are out there. And the final solvent-based paint we're going to cover today is urethane paints, urethane-based urethane paints. Um, Summer Racing offers a couple different options in that, our own private label paint. We have a, a single and a two-stage paint, and uh, it's a direction a lot of people are going, even body shops, collision shops are using urethane-based paints because there's a lot of advantages to them. Um, number one, it's a lot tougher than enamel uh, or lacquer, especially lacquer, very, uh, very chip resistant. Uh, number two, it's pretty easy to lay down a good uh, urethane paint job, it's easy to work with. Uh, you can apply urethane paints over other types of paints. Um, it's quick drying. Uh, actually, there's kind of an advantage and a disadvantage to that. The advantage is uh, once you apply it, you can uh, go back to sanding on it pretty quickly after, uh, after you apply it. It dries quickly. On the flip side, once you put the hardener in, into the uh, urethane paint, you have to use it up pretty quick or it's a, it's a waste. Uh, one 
Uh, disadvantage though to urethane paints is it's extremely, extremely toxic. It's got isocyanates in it, uh, which can be absorbed into your body. That's why you need to have a full respirator and you need to have your body, you need coveralls, you need your body completely covered. Uh, so that's, that's the one really lone disadvantage to urethane paints. Uh, fairly inexpensive. Uh, again, Summit Racing offers two different types of those, the single and the dual stage. And we'll get into what single and dual stage means uh, here shortly. Uh, before we do that, I want to cover quickly the, some of the waterborne or water-based paints that are available out there. We mentioned the solvent base, uh, water base, completely different. The carrier agent uh, usually has some sort of water form in it. Uh, the binding agent on, on water-based paints is also uh, made from water and it completely evaporates. Auto Air Colors is a company, for example, that makes a complete water-based paint. And the reason people are doing this, again, is for the environment doesn't have those chemicals that are evaporating. Uh, you know, California has pretty stringent laws and a lot of times, you know, other states are quick to follow. So uh, water-based paints may be the future of paint just because of the pollution issue. All right, so we've covered the different types of paints uh, classified as solvent-based and water-based. We've gone over all that. Uh, I wanna go back and touch on the single stage and the two-stage paint, which I mentioned earlier. Again, our Summit Racing paints come in as two options. You can get the single or the two-stage. Uh, starting with the two-stage, uh, you need to think of your paint in terms of the base coat or the color coat and then the clear coat, which goes over top of that, the part that really, really gives your vehicle the shine. Um, the two-stage paint, those two components are separate. You're going to apply a base coat to put the color down, and then you're going to apply the clear coat in a separate step and you may apply multiple clear coats depending on what kind of shine you want. Uh, you go to the uh, car shows and you'll see these cars with just a massive amount of shine because people have put uh, multiple amounts of clear coats. So on the two stage, separate process. Base coat goes down, clear coat goes over. Uh, it's, again, it give, gives you that extra deep finish, a good shine. Uh, it's great for metallics and pearl type paints. You put a mid coat in between the base and the clear coat to get that texture or that metallic look to it, uh, that extra pigment in there. Single stage, on the other hand, uh, the base and the clear goes on in one process. Uh, there's just one stage. You apply your top coat, and the clear coat is kind of in there in, in the fact that uh, that one coat is all your, your paint needs to reach its final gloss. You don't need to add extra clear coat. You can. In fact, we sell a clear coat to go with our single stage paint if you want a little extra shine, but it's not necessary. Uh, single stage, uh, advantage of that is it's pretty inexpensive paint uh, because you only have the one stage to apply or the one uh, coat to put on as far as just, you know, that, that top coat. It's, uh, it's good for a first time painter. Uh, it's easy to apply just because of those lack of extra steps. Uh, it's also great for basic color paints. If you're doing a basic black, basic yellow, basic red, it's just fine. You can put, again, put that extra clear on if you want it, but not necessary. Uh, a few quick things before you go ahead and decide on which paint to use, uh, things to consider. Uh, again, I mentioned it up front, but uh, local laws might be different where you're at as far as uh, environmental regulations, you may have to go with the low VOC. You're going to want to go ahead and check with those. If you're in California, I'm pretty sure you already know the answer to your question. There's other states like it as well. Uh, so check your local laws. Uh, also, what condition or what temperature are you going to be shooting your paint in? Uh, that's going to affect the type of hardener you get, the type of uh, any reducer that you might have. Those are rated by temperature ranges. So. Uh, take that into consideration as well. If there's any questions, uh, don't hesitate to call and talk to one of our advisors about that. Finally, uh, spray nozzles, uh, spray gun nozzles. Uh, rule of thumb for the two stage or the single stage paint, excuse me, 1.2 to a millimeter to 1.4 millimeter uh, is recommended for any HVLP gun you might be using. Uh, 1.2 to 1.5 uh, for a conventional style spray gun, a siphon, gravity feed gun. Uh, if you're going up to uh, a two-stage paint, we recommend a gravity feed gun for that. 1.3 millimeter or 1.4 millimeter spray gun nozzle. Same for the clear coat. Uh, if you opt for uh, water-based paint, 
like something Auto Air Colors offers, uh, they recommend uh, something uh, 1.2 to 1.4 at around 40 psi. Uh, again, I would call in and talk to one of our one of our advisors about that as well. Uh, also, there are some spray guns that are made uh, specifically for water-based paints. They have stainless steel internals, so you don't get the corrosion. That might be something to think about as well. Uh, All right, so hopefully this gets you on the right track to choosing the right paint for your vehicle. Uh, we have plenty of color options available and finishes and different metallics, pearls, all that stuff. Uh, until then, if you have any more questions about paint or any other tech-related questions, feel free to leave a question in the comment section below. Uh, hit our subscribe button to get the latest videos and watch some of our other Quick Flicks videos right over here.